Is okay. Good afternoon, Black Cosplayer Society. This is your main man, Will Antilles, a.k.a. Zero Reckham, a.k.a. Red 1, Red 2, Red 5, all that, you know, my monikers. And here today with the late, the great, because he's always late. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> late, the great, the Nathan Washup. Tell us about yourself and who are you, sir? Uh, I'm on Black Folks time. I am Nathan <laughs> Washup, the author. Uh, uh, current author of A New Beginning to uh, Old Endings book series. And uh, uh, actually an old friend of uh, Mr. Antilles here. So he'll have, if I say something and you don't, you guys don't get it, he'll know the behind story about it. He'll probably be able to explain it to you at a later time. Yes. So thank you for having me on the show with all you guys. Thank you for letting me be here. The great, uh, oh, I think it's a welcome. great platform. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, you're welcome. Um, you know, we have to uh, get our uh, message out there. Um, regardless, uh, we asked nicely before, but now let's go out and tell the people what we're about. Um, speaking of what we're about, um, I understand that you're a writer, right? And a creator. Yes. Um, what decided, what made you to decide to get into uh, writing? Because honestly, I write from time to time. And writing could be the hardest thing you ever do in your life. So what made you go that route? So first, first of all, I, 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 I had to call shenanigans on that one. Will, you write all the time. I, you write, write very often. You have so much content. You have enough content to write at least 10 or 12 books. So I have to put that out there for you people. He, <laughs> he, he has a lot of content. He just doesn't do it because he, he's I'm a so procrastinator. Busy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you call it what you want. Um, so what, what made me start uh, writing? Well, you, you know, back in the day, you know, when we, we first went into to this journey, we pretty much did it around the same time. Uh, there was a lack of content, you know, uh, like say there, there was a big, the big houses or the big writers. I don't want to say anybody's name because, you know, they can come down on your head and they'll uh, right. they make things hard for you. So, but at the time, there was very little content out there. There was either the blockbuster movies or just a few books. And I found myself starving for more content. I was like, you know what? I can do this just as well as they can. Right. So let me give it a go. And that's exactly what I did. I said, you know what? I'm going to get the ending I want. I'm going to get the beginnings that I want. And that's pretty much how I kicked it off. Speaking of beginnings and ending, I um, say the title of your book series again. Okay. So the title of the current series right now is The Old Beginnings to New Endings. What does that mean? Tell the readers what does it mean? Because it sounds like um, you went and you sat down and you started writing and this writing gave you some sort of fulfillment. So tell us about that. How did you come up with that concept? Okay, well, see, it's pretty complicated, but pretty simple at the same time. So what it is is I, um, I, when I sat down and I started writing this series, I already knew exactly how it was going to begin and how it was going to end. But I didn't want to start at the beginning. I wanted to start at the end and then end up at the beginning. So hence, old, you know, new beginning to old endings, because I know it's going to happen that way. Okay. And then that's going to be a total of, that's going to be a total of like five books, that first series. And then the title is going to switch from new beginnings to mm -hmm. old endings to new beginnings, because I know exactly. And it's going to tell the story of how um, each character views this whole lifespan. Okay. Because I don't want to, you know, so, and that's how, that, that's how that, that begins out like that. Okay. So a total of, a total of 10 books and it just tells each person's perspective at the same time. <laughs> it is. Okay. So how many books have you time, written it, so far? It cracks me up. Uh, I've actually got three books printed. Okay. They're out there selling and they're out there selling and they're making money. And, um, but I have seven of them sitting on my desk They're you know, I'm waiting to just get, get it printed off and right. get them proofread. And you know, and you yourself, you know, it's it's kind of hard to get dedicated people to sit there, and you 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 pay people to proofread and edit stuff for you. And once you give them that money, you, you don't pay people up front because once you give them the money, they're going to put you off. Right. I need my stuff done right now, so yeah. that's what slowed me down. I love Otherwise, that my way. books would. Yeah, yeah. You know, people just. You, they get the money, then they'll, they'll take other projects in front of yours. When I mean, you know you right. need yours by that print date. Right. So, so speaking of that, um, that you have laid out your universe and everything like that, and you, 
you yourself and myself a little bit is what we consider a indie writer. We consider ourselves indie writers because we're not signed to one publisher and we get to keep our rights and move our books around and our yes. uh, intellectual property around. But also we may call ourselves indie writers, but there's established writers or establishment that will call us slush funds. I mean, I mean, a few years ago yeah, yeah. when I had a uh, real quick, hold on real quick. Let me finish. Then I get to you. Um, a few years ago, a years ago, almost a decade ago, um, when we start, I started my journey to write a book or whatever, and I was in the writing forums, and there are professional writers in the uh, amateur entity forums, trashing, straight trashing us. And I actually was uh, talking to this guy back and forth for like over a series of three days, and I won't name his name. And yeah. he, he, he wrote, <laughs> this person wrote at least 12 published books he's a no anyway but that's what i'm saying so how do you deal with that okay i i you might have to edit this out later because this might be don't make no curses no curses no 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 of course i don't swear yeah, this is a this is a family friendly platform <laughs> no but it, but it's been said but it's the perfect way to say it i deal with it by not dealing with it okay you know how i deal with people like that i deal with it by Every three, every three months, I go to my mailbox and I pull out my fat check. That's how I deal with it. Okay. That's one because, way to do it. You know, I, I, I get my, regardless of what these people say about it, and, and you like, you're right, they're doggy. Because the only difference between those people and ourselves, or people like me, is that they had somebody willing to risk their money on their journey. Right. They were just fortunate enough to get their book or their manuscript on somebody's desk. And once those people get on that desk, they'll do any and everything to keep you off of that desk for the simple reason you are a threat to their money. Yeah. And I and I don't see it that way for the simple reason people can love different genres and different, you know, and like I was saying at the time when I started writing, there was a lack of content. I right. needed something, you know, so people need that choice. So when you have people out there, and I, I've seen quite, trust me, I've seen thousands of people just out there bashing people. Oh, that's no good. That's garbage. Right. Or oh, he's self-published. Or, you know what? It's the same thing. Now, am I going to say that um, a self-published person that comes right out the gate is good as one of the big people? No, because writing is a skill. The more you use that skill, the better that skill gets. So I tell right. people, you know, Write everything. Write any and everything. Let people see it. Right. Because a lot of times we could be our own worst critic. I think we got a little technical difficulties there. I think you're frozen. Um, we'll wait to see if he comes back. You're freezing. Hello? Nathan? I think I lost you. Okay. Okay, we're back, ladies and gentlemen. Start, sorry about that technical difficulty. Um, so the last question got kind of cut off. Could you go ahead and just give a quick brief uh, overview of the last question about how uh, you view, you know, establish, establishments maybe looking, frowning down on indie typewriters? Yeah, um, like it, it is. It, I, I like to say it like this. It is what it is. The establishment is an establishment. Once you're on the inside, you're trying to limit the amount of competition that you have. And that's what they do. They they they, they literally have a chokehold on 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 the you know on the uh, writing field. Okay. And all I can say is I tell people, you know, don't give up on your writing because if, if it's a passion for you like it was for me, get it out there. Now I want to add one more little small thing to that before we move on. Mm -hmm. At the time when I started writing, we didn't have as many, nearly as many uh, platforms to showcase ourselves on, like like we do today. Like, so my biggest platform at the time was this thing called <laughs> MySpace. You, right. you you used to be you get on there and you do blogs. So I would get on there and I would take my books or my little notes, to my short stories, and I would blog them. And all my friends they were like, "That's great stuff." You know what happens next, so that this lets me know that there are people, not just you know people that I know, but people are out there willing to uh, listen to and they thirst for what you want. So right. nowadays we have things like Facebook, 
and, and, and I would suggest to anybody, join a small writer's guild. You know, or, or like platforms like you're offering right now. Right. Get out there and let people know that you're out there and getting it done. You know, you don't have to be you don't have to be a billionaire writer all the time, but you right. know, just to get your passion out there, it's great stuff. That's nice. So again, I thank you for having a having this platform for us. Right. Um, you're welcome. Uh, anytime. Um, I my, my platform is very small. Um, all I'm doing is trying to uh, shed some light on some great uh, content out there that people may not know of because you know they're small or whatever. Um, speaking of writing, how would you classify your style? How would you classify your writing style? Because uh, some people will, for example, say, oh, I write like Mark Twain, for example. Um, would you say you mimic your writing style off of someone or you just organically develop uh, your own style? You you actually hit it right on the head when you say, I, when I uh, did I, um, I, I, I organically, and I believe it's for the simple reason, I don't do a lot of reading. And the reason I don't do that is because it's so easy to hear something and pick up on somebody else's stuff and you'll start mm-hmm. sounding like that person instead of being your own person. So I do like to read. I just don't read a lot of stuff in my own genre because okay. I don't just seem like it's, you know, it's copycatish. So but my writing style is, it's more, I like to put the reader in the middle of the action. When like Nomandia and Badius is out on the battlefield and they're getting at it, you're standing right there next to the sword saying, I want to pick this sword up and I want to get in this fight. That's the way I write. It's very descriptive and um, it, it's right in the moment. Okay. So you're basically, you're not on the outside looking in. You're on the inside looking out saying, hey, this is what's going on. So you actually become a part of that story. Well, um, from what I remember in um, the brief synopsis, synopsis that I went over uh, recently because it's been some time since I uh, visit, visited your realm and your universe there. Uh, but I know that you take pride into character development and how do you go about, excuse me there, um, creating a character uh, as complex as Nomadia and Badius? Um, are, would you say some of you are in each of your characters? That's exactly what it is. You, you got it? You know me so well. Okay, here's a, another little tip. You might you might end up editing this out, but it's not a swear. Many years ago, we played this game called the World of Warcraft. Yes, I and- remember vanilla <laughs> Warcraft. Now let me let me let me um, educate the folks out there. Before there was anything called vanilla Warcraft, it was just wow, the World War- of Warcraft. Yeah. When I had my foreign shaman, and I was straight PvP and murking everybody today, of course, nerfed it. But go ahead. <laughs> That's, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> You remember that, right? I was the king. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah you, you took me on a couple of adventures, which I was like, oh, shit, I'm not ready for that. Uh, <laughs> so uh, the main, my main characters on, the, on that realm of Dragon Maw, boop, I, yeah, I name dropped it, um, were Badius, my warrior, and Normandia at the time. She was a mage. Right. And when I played that game, I played it as those characters, like, what's going on? How do you do it? So that's how I developed. Hey, that's how oh, my girlfriend just walked in right in the middle of my uh, interview. Anyway, so that's how I developed yeah, those two There characters. you have it, ladies and gentlemen. When I developed a new. You have all types <laughs> of things when uh, we'll interviewing people. <laughs> Let it go ahead. <laughs> yeah. So they, they were already developed. So, um, I already had in mind, you know, two main characters. And so when I need somebody new, I'll write them in as I need them because I know they're going to serve a specific purpose. Now, I, I, I'm a happy ending type person, but sometimes somebody's got to die. So what do you call that person? The captain come quick. <laughs> yeah, I got a few of them. <laughs> well, I got a few of them. Honestly, so, um, now the Captain Come Quicks have uh, actually morphed into red shirts. Now they're going, around. but I just call—I still call them Captain Come Quick. But it's like Captain Come Quick. Uh, I found ah! right. right. <laughs> so yeah, so uh, I, I I I develop characters as I as I need them. You know. Okay. And, uh, some of them stick around for a while, and if they, they they don't move me the way I want them to move my readers, then they they meet a timely demise. But it's always respectful. 
Yeah. So um, if you could do it all over again, say you can, you know, you know, do the Scooby Doo, go back to the beginning. Um, what would you do do differently, and why? Okay. At first, when I, you know, because I had a preview of this question, I was going to say I would do nothing different, but then I realized that's a lie. What I would do differently is I would spend more time, um, like say I would reach out to other writers. You know, like I said earlier, uh, join writers guilds instead of spending a whole bunch of time sending all my books to the big houses to get all those rejection letters. I could spend all that time and energy with smaller people, magazines, platforms that are willing to publish this stuff. And we have hundreds and thousands of these things now, but back then it was a little bit harder. So if I could just go back and redo it, I would find all the people who were willing to uh, take my writing and, and put it out there and do it. That's what I would go with. Instead of taking people and begging and just trying to get a phone call from them, you know, out of right. like out of maybe 125, you know, attempts, I got I got like 10 callbacks. And of those 10 callbacks, they want to just call me and tell me I think we're losing you again. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Okay. So You're what I was later. saying earlier was that uh, I I said uh, at, at the beginning, I said I would do nothing differently because my writing has been very fulfilling for me. We're losing you again. Okay. Okay, we're back. Sorry about the technical difficulties. That's one of the things that's going on here while we all stay at home to stay safe from COVID-19. There's a lot of bandwidth issues are uh, hitting the ISP because of capacity issues. So I'm, so I'm sorry that we're having a little technical issues. So let's move on to the next question. And that would be, um, what makes you focus? You've written seven books. I've written one. Seven and one, you're the winner. <laughs> what makes you focus? I have a focus, focusing problem because my mind is racing a thousand things and I have my hands in too many pies. But speaking of which, ah, my pie business went down, but it is what oh, COVID-19. But anyway, go yeah. ahead. I, wait, man, let's, let's talk about COVID for a second. I've contracted that stuff twice. Wow. Two times. It's very easy to get. Please. Please, my people, please be safe. And now back to our story. Um, how do I stay focused? You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna say I've been blessed with uh, ever since I was a kid. That's all I do is sit and think and focus. You know, a lot of people experience writing blocks, and things like that. Whereas I can just sit there on this quiet room and maybe a cup of coffee. Bam! Right. Crank it out. And and right. that's and I've always I think I think we're breaking up a little bit again. Um, for the same reason, when I go into doing the project, I know how I want it to begin. I, I'm, you might be right. A lot of people use that. <laughs> right. Well. Anyway, um, we're we're ending. Uh, we're nearing the end of our time here. Um. Don't want to keep you too long. I know you got 10,000 books to write. I have things to do, maybe. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> so the last two questions, do you have a favorite writer? And I don't, I've never seen you cosplay, but since we, you are talking to the Black Cosplayer Society, who would you Yay! cosplay? I mean, if I could, okay. Let, let, let's <laughs> My favorite writer is me. I, I, I'm not, I know that sounds like a, those things to say, I, I love what I do. I mean, oh, and okay, I, 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 if you can't believe in yourself, like you're the greatest person on the planet, you, you should be in this oh, game. Like the I old really, saying, say, you should I'm be your own favorite writer. Just ask me. <laughs> yeah. So let's focus on cop. Are you there? Oh, <laughs> yeah. So 
You never cosplay yeah. as, far, as far as I know, right? <laughs> and uh, if I could, yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Yeah. No, I'm here. We, we're going right. to go back to, no, I have not. And I could pull it off. <laughs> it's two people that I'd love to do. And I, I know one of them I just don't fit at, but I would still do it. I love the Full Metal Alchemist. Okay. <laughs> I just love it. Which one? Uh, and if, Eric? Eric? No, no, no. Eric, you know, oh, Jesus Christ, that hurt. Um, you know. <laughs> yeah, man. When you got to go, ugh, to touch your toes, it's time to get back to Planet Fitness. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and the second person, and I don't, I, I never ever see this at any cons or anything like this, but I would love to suit up and become the Giver. Man, come on, man. Have I seen the Giver at a con? Whew, I've been going to cons for a decade now, and you may be right. I have not seen the Giver. Um, here's the thing. I would you need to you, you need to get an armorer to create that the, the yeah, that's elaborate. Um, yeah, it, it it is. That would cost you a pretty penny. Because I was just talking to an armorer before in my last interview, and uh -huh. yeah, that will cost you a pretty penny. You you be prepared to spend about a thousand dollars. If oh that okay, a thousand dollars easy. Boom, got it. And but uh, you, I, I I would end up being a, I was I would surely be a fat show Fukumachi. I would do it. I hey, would be there. Hey, nobody. <laughs> there, hey, in the black cosplayer society, and and it's one of the reasons why I created it is we don't body shame. We don't oh, color shame. No, I'm, I'm just saying uh, sort of people. I know what you're saying. When you cosplay, yeah. you can cosplay anybody. It don't matter the color of your skin, your gender. You want to switch the role, switch it. You want to own it, own it. That's all I'm saying that you can be Sho Fukumachi and you can own the Giver. I haven't seen a Giver in the cons. So I say make your plan and get cracking in it. If you want to find out how you can do this, Go to the Black Cosplayer Society. This is for anyone. Come in, yeah. join the group. Anybody's welcome. And we can show you, there's a lot of talented people in there that can show you how to get it done. So um, All right. that being said, I love the fact that you came on my show, um, give me some great interviews, barring some technical difficulties, but that's the times we live in. And um, once again, I am Will and Titty. Antilles Zero Rec Room. This is Nathan Washup, the creator of the Mo Nomandia and Baddiest series called A New Beginning to Old Endings. Go get it. Thank you. out there, folks. All right. Peace and hair grease, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming on my show and peace. We out.